Hi everyone and welcome to episode 65 of the Talk is Cheap show. Hope you're all well, healthy and COVID free. Thanks to everyone for tapping in. We've got another great show lined up for you today. But before we go any further, let me start by introducing a man who needs no introduction really. But it would be remiss of us not to introduce a man whose resume is so lengthy and so impressive. And his list of accomplishments makes it a prerequisite that we have to introduce him and put the respect on his name that he deserves. So here we go then. Former professional footballer of several clubs, a man who has also represented his country of origin at international level, current social media football star of renown and captain of AFTV FC, YouTube content creator, show analyst, co-host, the forthright, the erudite, the enlightening, the illuminating, the sometimes controversial, but always entertaining. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big <laughs> digital round of applause for Curtis Shaw of Curtis Shaw TV. Now, how do we say, bro? Them intros get better every week, Laurie, I'm telling you. <laughs> I owe you a check for that. <laughs> certain, bro. that you made me feel like a superstar, bro. <laughs> no, but it, it's fully deserved, and I have to say that I enjoy this part of the show, man. It, yeah, I can tell. No, I appreciate it. No, I'm good, man. At least, um, at least there's some light at the end of the tunnel now. You know, we got yeah, data right. from yeah. a lockdown and that, so you know, fans back in the stadium. It's looking looking better now. Looking a bit rosier in the garden. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I was going to uh, start off the show um, with our news and nuts by asking you just that about the lockdown and. We've heard from the government this week that they're um, planning to bring us out the lockdown and they're introducing a series of measures to do just that. One of which is the plans to have uh, football back in the stadiums. I think they're earmarking the, the end of the season, the last game of the season, which I think is the 23rd of May. Um, yes. So I think what the plan is, is to have up to 10,000 fans in the stadium or a quarter of the capacity, whichever is the smaller. So Curtis, my man, what's your thoughts on that? I'm delighted, man, because it means that we're on the road to recovery. Um, I mean, it would be great if that game, there was a lot riding on that game at the end of the season. I mean, it's interesting. The Europa League final is the following week. Yeah. So, you know, you never know if we end up reaching that final. Maybe they'll allow some fans to go there. I would definitely want to go to the final. Um, I'm not hoping when we reach the final. Let's be well, when we reach it. Yeah, when we reach it. I think it's in Poland, I believe. So, uh, no, but it's great, man. Listen, I'll be honest, and I'm not just saying this because it hasn't been a great season for Arsenal. Football isn't the same without fans. You know, no. we've all kind of adjusted to it because that's all we've had to work with. But it will be amazing to have the fans back in and hear that noise and stuff. So, listen, the sooner the better. Yeah, it's going to feel strange, actually, when that does happen. But listen, man, bring it on. Bring it on. Yeah, yeah man, thanks for that. Um, also, news and notes this week. Um, Rumours emerging during the week that um, PSG is showing some interest in our star player, a.k.a. Hector Bellerin, a.k.a. Hecky B, a.k.a. Hecky Becky. But... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so what's your thoughts on that, bro? I mean... Um, there's also a rumour going around that Hector Bellerin's let it be known to some of his close confidants that he'd, he'd welcome a move away. Um, I think you know what I think about that. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, you're, you're the man, you're the expert. What's your views on... I mean, look, I, I know we banter him about his name and all that kind of stuff, but I think it's also important to acknowledge his... He's been at the club for 10 years. Um, I think he's been in the first team for around seven years now. So he's been a good servant of the football club in that sense. He came through the youth system. Um, so I'm always respectful of that. I just think, I think it would be mutually beneficial for everybody if he was moved on now. I mean, number one, if Hector Bellerin's got an opportunity to go to PSG, I think he should jump at the chance. You know, he'll win trophies there. He'll be in the Champions League. He'll live in Paris. I think for Arsenal, we need to upgrade him. I think uh, my biggest issue with Bellerin, I haven't seen enough technical improvement in him over the years. I know he had a, a very serious injury, but things like your ability to cross the ball and things like that, that should improve with the standard of coaching and training you've got. So yeah. for me, yeah, I think 
if they made a decent offer for Bellerin this summer, I would cash in on him. Respectfully, I say, mm. but I would. Yeah, you know what? I would have to agree with that. I mean, listen, I think that uh, that proposed move, if it does come off, I think it's mutually beneficial to all parties. It's it be as long as Arsenal get a fee that they feel represents the value of the player. I think it's mutually beneficial. It suits Arsenal, and I think it suits the player as well. Like you said, he's probably going to win a few things at PSG. It'll be this starting right back. And being in France, one of the big cities in Europe, if not the world, he'll get a chance to expand his uh, brand. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kiki B brand. Uh, <laughs> did you go out and buy one of those edition um, sustainable material hoodies this week? I was I was in no rush to get that. I have to be honest. <laughs> no, I was in no rush, but I don't think I'll be wearing Hector Bellerin clothing brands anytime yes. soon. Well, we'll see what happens on that front. But um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's worth mentioning. Okay, so moving on then to uh, a regular feature of uh, the shows we do every week, which is to look back on the Arsenal's previous game since our last show. Um, I think it's fair to say we've enjoyed better weeks, but um, yeah. anyway, um, we had so so we had the two games then. Um, one, the first game was away to Benfica in the Europa League, so we'll start with that one first. Um, I'll kick off by saying I thought it was a, a disappointing game, to be honest. Um, yeah. Prior to the game last week, we were here and we were trying not to sound too overconfident or complacent. But let's face it, we were expected to beat Benfica. And from what I could see of them, I hope I'm not doing them too much of a disservice. I wasn't particularly impressed. I thought they were a fairly mediocre team. And um, I thought we should have won the game. In the end, we came away with a draw. Um, I think it was a game most notable for a number of missed opportunities by our main man and captain, but we'll talk about him a bit later. But yeah, I was a bit disappointed with the draw, man, um, given the circumstances. What was your thoughts, Curtis? Yeah, I was very disappointed. I felt I felt we had the opportunity to finish the whole tie-off in that game, to be honest. Uh, I did expect a lot more from Benfica, I thought. You know, if they didn't get that penalty, I'm not sure they would have scored in that game. Yeah. So, but ultimately, you know, in football, I'm a striker myself. If you have clear-cut opportunities and you miss, you have to harbour the blame. And uh, Aubameyang is a, is a great finisher. Um, you know, nine times out of ten, he scores those chances. It's one of them days that it just, you know, no striker misses a chance on purpose. He would probably score that most of the times, but ultimately that cost us the game. I suppose if I'm trying to clutch at positives, we are in front of the tie, effectively. We're winning on away goals as such. And um, the high line that Benfica played, I felt, played right into our hands. So if they set up like that in the second leg, I am confident that we'll beat them. But it was disappointing that we didn't come away from that game with maybe a two or three goal lead, which I, I think we could have got. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much um, what I was thinking as well. Disappointing, disappointing, but but hey, like we get a chance to put that right this week. We'll talk about that return game a bit later. But yeah. moving on then to the second game of the past week, and that was arguably even more disappointing, to be honest. Um, I mean, listen, uh, it was a 1-0 loss, and um, we never seemed to really perform against City. Um, especially in the Premier League. I know we got a win against them in the Cup last year, but in the Premier League, not so. Uh, and this game was no different. We lost the game 1-0. Um, but I don't think it was so much that we lost the game. What a lot of people, myself included, had a problem with was the manner of the defeat. Um, it was a performance that I described previously as passive-aggressive. Well, that was probably more passive than it was aggressive, if you know what I mean. Uh, pretty poor display, I have to say, to be honest. Um, it seemed that we took the path of least resistance to me. Uh, two holding midfielders, no real attacking intent, uh, too much content to pass the ball either sideways or backwards, um, to the point where it got me thinking whether the approach to the game was to keep the score down rather than actually try and go for a win. It reminded me of watching some of City's games I've seen in previous seasons where they've come up against a lesser team and that lesser team may have been involved in a potential relegation battle. And it's almost like they're looking past that game and saying, listen, as long as we come out of this game without getting thrashed, 
we will turn our attentions to games we've got coming up that we deem more important. And mm. I was kind of thinking that with regards to Arsenal. I was watching that game and I was thinking, is Mikel Arteta, in a way, letting it be known almost that he's prioritising the Europa League the following week? Because I never got the impression that Arsenal were truly out there to win. Uh, that's my views. Curtis, you're the expert. What do you think, bro? I mean, listen, losing a losing a football match to Manchester City, who are, I believe they've won 18 games in a row in all competition. That that's nothing to be ashamed of, right? They're a better team than us. So I can understand that. But for me, the performance was I would go as far as to say I thought it was a shambles from Arsenal. That performance didn't represent Arsenal Football Club to me in any shape or form. It was almost as if there was an acceptance before the game that we'll probably lose this. You know, and to me as a football, you should never have that. I looked at that game and I thought, one nil down with 20 minutes to go is not a bad position to be in against Manchester City in a crazy way. And and what made it even worse, City didn't even play that well, in my opinion. I mean, they could have took their shirt off after that game and put it back on the peg and just put it on on Wednesday because I don't think they broke a sweat. They didn't get out of first gear. I don't understand why Arsenal didn't go for it in the last 20, 25 minutes. I, I don't know what you think, but me as a fan, I would rather lose 2-0 trying to equalise than just sit back and say, oh, you've beaten us 1-0. You know, I you just... know what? I, I absolutely agree and endorse everything you said there. And not only that, what makes it worse for me is that it's not the first time we've said that this season, is it? No, no. It's not the first time we've seen it. We, we saw it earlier in the season against City, and I can name a couple of other games as well, um, whereby, you know I mean, you got the impression that if only we'd have put a little bit more out there, we might have got a bit more in return. I mean... The game started pretty atrociously. That's another thing that seems to happen too much. We, we seem to get off to these very poor starts. I mean, listen, in that game, and I'm pretty sure I'm right in this, is that City nearly scored with their first attack of the game off following the kickoff. So straight from the kickoff, they nearly scored. So you're thinking to yourself, if that didn't wake the team up, I don't know what's going to. But then it gets worse than that. With their next attack, in less than two minutes, they do score. Had a horrendous goal to give away. I think um, Raheem Sterling scored a header where he'd out jump Rob Holding, who's about six foot four. And um, Raheem Sterling's about five foot seven. And then there was our friend Hickey Becky at the back who chose not to even challenge for the ball. Um, so, yeah, man, it's very disappointing. And then it didn't really get much better from there on in, really, did it? I mean, we yeah. had matches of play where we had a lot of the ball, but we didn't really do much or threaten to do much. I think we had one shot on target in the first half and we didn't have a shot on goal in the second half. So to use a boxing analogy, we didn't lay a glove on them. And that was very disappointing for him. I mean, I mean, the thing is, Sterling is, he's basically unmarked. He didn't even have to outjump anyone because <laughs> holding kind of checks his shoulder to look where he is and then, he ends up just facing him as he's heading in it. It's shambolic defending. But do you know we haven't scored against Manchester City in the last three league games against them? You know, three yeah. nils and two one nils. I know we beat them in the cup. But in the league, we don't seem to get anywhere near them. And well, I can give you one better than that. Go on. Give you a stat one better than that. We've yeah. now lost our last eight league games against City. Eight I mean, games in a row in the league. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, these are the problems. Look, Manchester City are a great team. This season, they have I've seen them really turn up the heat against certain teams. It, it almost looked as if Pep told them, look, just, just leave it now. Don't do too much damage. He's taking De Bruyne off after 60. Yeah, that'll do you, bruv. Aguero's on the bench the whole game. Yeah, don't, don't, don't risk it. This game's already won. For me, it was, honestly, it was, I thought it was a shambles. It was yeah. an absolute yeah. shambles. We didn't lay a glove on them in that game. And I likened our midfield pairing of Xhaka and El Nenny to the famous Chuckle Brothers, um, <laughs> who used to be on TV. To me, to you, to me, to you. Because I, I don't think we got the ball forward the entire game. I, I didn't understand the team selection. I thought Danny Ceballos was really good against Benfica, really good 
against Leeds. He then gets dropped. Outside of Thomas Party, he's the only real midfielder that looks for that forward pass. So, yeah, it, it was it was a poor performance. Like I, like I say, I can accept losing to a better team, but it was a weak effort, a timid it was, effort. It was. And, of course, um, after the game, uh, one of the big talking points was uh, the performance of our main man and captain, uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. He came in with some pretty heavy criticism, including... Uh, by Sky Sports pundit uh, Jamie Redknapp, who, who went in on Aubameyang. He described him as, and I quote, past his best um, and getting bullied and uh, one or two other uncomplimentary remarks. You know what I mean? And um, I don't know about you, man, but I thought that assessment was over the top. I thought it was unfair. And I thought, you know what? It's pretty disrespectful, really, to label him in them terms. I mean... Yeah, he's not having a good season. He's having a difficult season. The confidence has not been there. But listen, man, I mean, I always say form is temporary, class is permanent. I mean, it was only a couple of weeks ago that Aubameyang scored a hat-trick in the 4-2 win against Leeds and was man of the match. Um, and now a couple of weeks later, according to Jamie Redknapp and people who agree with him, that he's passed his best and getting bullied every week. Um, so I thought what I would do is I pulled up some re pulled up some receipts on Aubameyang um, since he came to the club and they make for some interesting reading and they probably support what I'm going to say next, which is that, so this is his fourth season. Um, he arrived there in January, 2018. So that would have been the 2017, 2018 season. He scored 10 Premier League goals in that season. His second season, 2018, 2019, 22 Premier League goals, golden boot winner. Third season, 2019 2020 again 22 premier league goals just one behind the golden boot winner and so far this year he's got eight goals in this season 2020 2021 and let's not also forget his uh exploits last year in winning this the fa cup you know what i mean yeah. and Harry shield um on top of that he's the first arsenal striker to get to 50 goals that's a club record and he's got also over 200 career goals and if you look at his record when he was at Dortmund before he came to Arsenal, he's pretty prolific there too. So I do think that was pretty disrespectful of Jamie uh, Redknapp to label him as finished and over the hill and being bullied. Uh, and I think, you know, it's time some of these guys and, and some of the Arsenal fans as well to put some respect on the man's name. He's not in the best of form. That much is obvious. But to write him off after one indifferent season, I think that's a bit harsh, man. What do you think, bro? Look, I always say that um, if we've, not that we want them in there, but if we've accepted players like Bellerin, Xhaka, Lacazette, El Nenny, people who've been far more inconsistent than Aubameyang over the years, and they get a bit of a pass to be in the team, then Aubameyang's got more credit in the bank than all of them players put together. Because let's face it, since the day he signed for the club, He's been the main man, you know. He, he's been the guy who's who scored the goals. This season, it hasn't really happened for him. He's got eight goals. I would still say he could probably get 15 league goals this season, 15 plus. Considering how bad this season's been, it's respectable. Is Aubameyang the same player now that he was when we signed him? Probably not quite. But that's naturally. I think he's 31 years of age now. He's not going to be quite the same player he was at, at 27, 28. But Aubameyang, to me, is a very specific player. You have to play a certain way. You have to create chances for him. He's not an Alexis Sanchez, just give me the ball anywhere on the pitch and I'll make something happen. He needs to be on the end of a pass, on the end of a move. Look, any striker playing in that Arsenal team this season would have struggled because we have been terrible. We, we've spoken all season about a lack of creativity until probably Smith Rowe came into the team. So he has struggled this year, but that is a poor team this year. You know, no, no attacking player really has excelled in the Arsenal team this season, apart from maybe Saka. So... Listen, I think Arsenal fans, yeah, be frustrated with him if he's missing chances, if he's not playing as well as we know he can. But ultimately, we have to support him because he has got a lot of credit in the bank. And you know if you create chances for him, nine times out of ten, he's going to finish. So I think Aubameyang will improve as the team improves, if you like. So we've got to support him. He's, he, to me, he's still our best player. Yeah. 
No, again, I agree with what you say there. I mean, listen, like I said before, he's having an indifferent season. But we let's be honest, we're only halfway or just over halfway through the season with a lot to play for. So he could come good again. There's no reason to suggest why not. Um, and he's had uh, he's had a couple of injuries this season. Um, he had the uh, incident with his mum not being well. So, you know, he's not been the best, most fortuitous season, but there's still time to pull it around. I mean, I've seen top-level strikers like Aubameyang go through way worse form than what he's going through at the moment, and they've come through at the other end. So I think it's absolute nonsense to suggest he's finished. And um, I look forward to him proving a lot of people wrong. I mean, listen, isn't it ironic that um, when we were doing these shows last year, we actually said, what's going to happen the day when Aubameyang stops scoring for Arsenal? Where would we be? without Aubameyang scoring goals for us. And we did say, didn't we? We would say we'd be lower table. You know what I mean? And that's exactly what's happened. And and I also think with the Aubameyang thing, yes, it's right to criticise where it's justified. Um, you know, if he's missing open goals, then yeah, of course he's going to get stick. I'm sure he's big enough to um, realise that as well. Um, but we do have a problem with goals coming from the rest of the team. And that's been highlighted this year. You know what I mean? We, we just don't get the goals from midfield that other teams are getting. You know what I mean? And I think that's a bit of a problem as well. But anyway, I uh, don't want to talk about that all show. But um, So let's move on again then to another regular feature of the show. And it kind of um, synchronises nicely into what I want to talk about. Um, another couple of big games coming up this week. The first one is as an away game to Benfica in the Europa League. The second leg... Um, a game that we absolutely have to win. Um, I said we were disappointing last week. And yes, I think, you know, I stand by that. Although we didn't lose, we got a draw, we got an away goal as well. So it's all to play for this week. Um, and I'm titling the show this week, All or Nothing, based on this game. Because if we don't get through here, yeah, uh, given our league form at the moment, uh, the season, well, it's in danger of dying out. Yeah, win this game. So we absolutely have to win this game. It's imperative. So yeah, yeah all or nothing, man. Um, Curtis, what's your thoughts? Do you agree with me? No, I agree, man. If if we don't beat them, and you look at the league position, I mean, we're now down to eleventh. We're in that bottom half of the table again now with Leeds winning. So any talk of top four and all that has, I think, completely gone out of the window now. You know. Um, if we don't beat Benfica, having watched them last week, if we can't beat them over two legs, then we don't deserve to be in the competition because they are, you know, they're a big team. They're a giant of a team, but their team on the pitch is nothing special, man. You know, yeah. we're going to have to beat better teams than them to try and win this competition. I've got to admit, and I don't like doing this because you know what Arsenal are like, but I'm confident that we're going to beat them. I am. I, I think... We drew 1-1 without really playing that well, but we missed, you know, three clear-cut chances for Aubameyang. Saka had a decent chance as well, where he cut inside and, and shot. So I'm confident that we can beat Benfica, but, you know, sometimes that confidence is dangerous because I remember me and you going to the Emirates last season confident that we'd beat Olympiacos, you know, and we all know how that ended up. So, listen... Mikel Arteta has come in for a lot of criticism this season from me, from a lot of people, but these players have to perform on Thursday. You know, they can't hide behind the manager for this game. So I want to see a performance. Just keep us in that competition and then hopefully we get some luck in the draw and then we build from there, you know? Yeah, I mean, myself, I'm, I'm confident, but I'm cautious because as you said last year, it was a similar type of scenario, wasn't it? Um, we were very pleased when we got when Olympiacos came out the hat last year. We was thinking, yeah, you know, decent side, but you know, to all intents and purposes, we we should get through that game. And in the end, we found a way not to get through. I think that game as well, Aubameyang, he scored a worldie in that game, and then missed a sitter, and then they went up the other end and scored, and we ended up finding ourselves out of the competition. And I think my memory serves me right. They went on to play Wolves in the very next round, and Wolves dealt with them fairly comfortably. And we yeah. were sitting at home thinking, come on, man. You know what I mean? So, 
You're right. If we're going to do anything in this competition, we should be getting past the likes of Benfica. Who, let's yeah. face it, whilst they're a big name, it has to be said, judging on what I saw last week, judging on the form I see that they've been displaying in the league, where they're currently fourth in the Premier League, uh, in the first top rank Portuguese football, they're fourth in that league. Um, given the fact that perhaps their best known players, the Tongan, um, Otto Mendy and Adel Tarat, um, all three of those guys, you have to say, if not past their best, then they're in the twilight of their careers. Yeah. Uh, so whilst we're not playing them well ourselves, we should still have enough to get past Benfica, especially in two games. If it was yeah. a one-off game and we played bad and got beat, you could say, well, on the day we just never performed and we got beaten. But you've got two games to get this right, man. You know what I mean? So there could be no excuses if we lose this. Um, I think first, first goal is going to be vital because obviously we're ahead on away goals at the moment, but we need to score first, in my opinion. It's interesting how this game's being played in Greece as well. So uh, yeah, it happens, yeah. I don't know if it's at Olympiakos Stadium or not. I'm not sure, but um, there's no, there's no <laughs> real, it's just no real it's in it. Yeah, but we're, we're going there, but. No, listen, there's no real home or away advantage. Obviously, that the away leg, they weren't at home for that and we're not. So, there's no excuses. You know, obviously, we've got difficult Premier League games around it, but the whole focus has to be on this game. Team selection is going to be vital because he's got a few decisions to make. I thought one or two of those team selections were wrong in the last game. Um, I have to admit I've been disappointed with the handling of Nicolas Pepe because for me, as not I reckon, right? not for the first time, Laurie, but listen, we finally got Pepe in, a, in some sort of rich vein of form and we're saying, yes, finally we're seeing the player. And then you pull him out for the Leeds game. We're all saying, oh, no, he's rested him for Benfica. And then Benfica comes, he's not playing. And then, lo and behold, me and you said, I said to you off camera, I said, I bet he plays him against Manchester City because, you know, and the worst thing about it, he's been playing great on the left, yet against Man City, he plays him on the right and then takes him off. And you can guarantee he won't start against Benfica now because he'll say, I didn't play well against City. So, I don't understand. He just doesn't seem to like Pepe for some reason. So... It'll be interesting. Yeah, with there might be some conspiracy theories out there, of which I am not one. I hate on. that. That might almost be coming to the view that he's been set up to fail. Because like you said, prior to the um, previous game against Benfica, um, was it Benfica? Um, he didn't play against Leeds either, did he? But prior no. to the Leeds game, he'd had about two or three, maybe even four games where he played well in all those games and still, yeah. and you're thinking, right, you know I mean? He's been lacking for confidence, but he seems to be in a little good right vein of form. You know what I mean? Lo and behold, he gets dropped for the Leeds game, doesn't come on. And then, like you said, people are saying, was he rested? Then he doesn't play again, but he plays against City. That's always going to be a difficult game. Pepe played. He was one of a number of people in that game who didn't play well. And like you said, it's highly likely that he won't feature against Benfica. So, you know, I mean, I, I don't know what's going on there, but it would appear that the manager doesn't really fancy Pepe. I think that much is clear by now, isn't it? Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, but Pepe notwithstanding, Curtis, what type of team would you like to see put out against Benfica yeah. this week? I'd, I'd play, obviously, Leno in goal. The back four, I would go back to David Luiz. and. Uh, no, we're on Arson. <laughs> you want the season to finish on Thursday night, no? <laughs> no, but I'll play. Um, I'll play Tierney at left back. I'll play Louise and Gabriel. I thought they were they were a solid partnership in the first leg. Um, I would uh, right back. I would probably put Cedric in. You know, I would, especially if you know. No, Becky, is, you know? no hecky Becky, man. He's had a fair chance. You know, I, I think. Go well, we all know he's going to play, though, don't we? Let's he is going to play, you know, he'll definitely play. He, he is, right, in, in many respects. The polar opposite with what's going on with Pepe, don't it? Yeah, Pepe he is. manager doesn't seem to fancy Pepe for whatever reason, and I'll use that term loosely, by the way. Um, he does seem to, however, have a lot of faith in uh, old Hecky Becky, 
which I don't really see that myself. But he does, he's a manager. Um, he watches and trains, so I guess he's got his reasons. But anyway, so yeah, so you think you'll go for Cedric? Well, I would go for Cedric, but he, he, will, he will go with Bellerin. He'll go Becky Becky. He'll go Bellerin. you got to go probably... I mean, they're saying Thomas Partey might be available now, so... Yeah, I heard that. I mean, listen, man, he's been injured. Surely, got to. We've got to risk it. Now, if he gets injured now, then, it, you know, he basically hasn't played all season, but you've got to play him in this game for me. I, I want to see... I want to see Thomas Partey and Danny Ceballos. That, for me, is... It's the one partnership that always in the back of my mind, I thought, I wonder how those two would work together. Now, I know it could be risky using that in a game that's so important, but I just think Ceballos, in the last couple of games, has been our best midfielder. And, and him and Partey, I think, could work. I'm going um, to play a bit of devil's advocate here. Uh, and I'm there gonna, we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I honestly do believe this, although it is in part the devil's. I want to challenge your views on this because... Yeah. I think that the Thomas Partey Granite Xhaka combination works quite well because with Granite Xhaka, whatever you want to say about the guy, he is quite a tough tackler. He's robust. Um, he's got a certain will to win that I like. And um, to use a Jamie Redknapp phrase, he definitely won't be bullied. Um, and I think that in games like this, in big games like this, that's crucial. That's important. So, and then with Partey, him playing alongside Partey. That allows Partey um, a little bit more independence to um, make more forward runs and, you know, provide more forward-thinking balls. What do you think? I just felt like, for me, in the first leg, I thought Granit Xhaka was poor. Uh, you remember that pass he played along the penalty area and nearly cost us a goal, which was a crazy... He's got him again. He's got yeah, him. there you go. And, and, and I think this is such a crucial game. You can't afford to make that mistake. I also, obviously, Manchester City was going to be hard. Him and El Nenny, they didn't do anything, really. Um, but did you expect them to? I mean, you no, no, not not with those two. Out of that team, like, it was a home game. Mm. Although I, know, I keep saying it, home in a way doesn't mean too much these days. But it was a home game, and you've got two holding midfielders. Where did they expect the um, penetration was going to come from? For me, I, I, just, I just look at, I look at Granite Xhaka like this, right? Since we signed Granite Xhaka, we haven't made the Champions League once since we signed him. Now, I'm not saying that's all his fault. Of course not. But he's been a mainstay in our midfield amongst every manager, really, has favoured him. So that is credit to him. I think he's a weak link. I honestly think, listen, this guy, yeah, he has improved under Mikel Arteta. Has he improved to the level that is required? Does Granite Xhaka get in any of those top six midfields? You know, you can argue, would he or wouldn't he? I just think he's a weak link. I think if you're Man City, if you're Man United, if you're Liverpool, someone like that, I think you would target Granite Xhaka. And yeah, him and Thomas Partey do look good together, but is that at the expense of Thomas Partey? Is he doing so much running and so much work that he's almost covering him? Is that part of the reason he's getting injured? I know it's a conspiracy as such, but... I just think Danny Ceballos has that extra little bit of quality on the ball. I think European games are not as physical, so it's not like you're getting hammered in the tackle. And I think Ceballos and Thomas Partey, I would go for it. I know they haven't played together, but I, I would try it. I, I still, I'm still not a big fan of Granit Jack, I have to admit. Yeah, I can detect that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's coming across loud and clear. But you yeah, know, yeah. I want to present an alternative argument. I mean, oh. I'm not necessarily a whole adv wholesome advocate for Dan Granite Xhaka, and and I'm not capping, yeah. Mm. So what I'm saying now, I genuinely do believe. But if you remember, in years gone by, one of the major criticisms of Arsenal was that we could get bullied and overran in midfield and get overpowered, and people, you know, they would just run through us. Mm. I would say that since the arrival of Granite Xhaka to us, or that has become less so. You, you, Whatever you want to say about the guy, um, he's no pushover. You know what mm. I mean? He, he can be quite rash, and he can be quite, um, how can I put it, in terms of his distribution of the ball. It's a bit, <clears throat> how can I put it? It's yeah, He's not forward <laughs> enough in terms of his passing. He's not innovative. He's not creative. He doesn't always yeah. look at that forward pass when he should do. 
but he does bring certain attributes to the team that I think that we need. Um, and I'm, I'm looking at this game, and whilst I hear you about Ceballos, um, I would pair Thomas Partey and Granit Xhaka together and give Partey the responsibility of making those forward runs and those forward passes and try and open up what I would imagine is going to be a quite resolute Benfica defence. In what I'm saying, they're going to have a lot of men behind the ball and we're going to have to show a little bit of innovation and creativity in trying to break them down. Something that um, we haven't been brilliant at this season, to say the least. So I can understand why you want some bias in there, but I would still make a case for at least starting with Granit Xhaka anyway. And then we can bring on some bias later if, if things are not working out that way. I mean, uh, I've... Moving further up the pitch then, what, what would you like to see with the, um, the forward line, man? Because we're going to need to score in this game, maybe two or three. So this is this is where it gets tricky because he's got so many options. Um, so many options, but none of them are scoring. No, I mean, look, one one that's for certain, Saka will start on the right. I think we can all agree on that. The ten role, do you play Odegaard or Smith Rowe? I'm not. For Odegaard played well against Benfica last week. Didn't play great against City, but then who did? Um, so I would maybe go Odegaard again because I thought he played really well against Benfica. And is it me, but um, Smith Rowe, enough respect to him, young lad coming, done tremendously well. But do you think I'm right in saying that his performances have dipped off, if ever so slightly, over the past couple of weeks? Yeah, I think I think number one, we've played against quality opposition over the past few weeks. We played Man United, we played City, we've obviously Benfica was a high pressure game. You know, he's looked a little bit tired to me. It's, it's no criticism of him. He's had injury problems in the past. He did he's, okay against Leeds, right? Yeah, he did all right. Um, yeah, yeah, he played on the left in that game. But I just think sometimes you can't put all the responsibility on young players. It's it's basically his first season as a first-team regular. So sometimes you just got to take him out the firing line a little bit. And I would probably go with Odegaard in the 10. Um, on the left, I would probably go for Pepe. I got to be honest. I would bring him back in. I know a lot of people want to see Martinelli play as well, but I get the impression Arteta is holding him back a little bit because of these injury problems that he's had um, and using him more as a sub. But because Benfica played such a high line last week, and we played Smith Rowe on the left, Odegaard in the ten, I thought he missed a bit of a trick there. I think you need as much pace as possible when a defense is defending that high. I would bring Pepe back in. Through the middle, I would stick by him, you know. I know some people would probably drop a by me and consider in the last two games, but the fact he had that many clear-cut chances against Benfica, the one positive you can look at is they didn't actually deal with him very well, you know, because he had those chances. Now, I think on another day, he scores those chances. And I know it's a bit harsh on Lacazette because, again, he was playing quite well before he got dropped. I think you've got Lacazette, Martinelli, Smith Rowe, those players on the bench. You've got plenty of players to bring on. So I would go with Aubameyang through the middle again. Um, cause I, do... uh, I was giving this some thought today. Yeah. Given the fact that, uh, well, not the fact, but it's my thoughts that we're going to get a lot of the ball. I think Benfica are going to sit deep. Uh, we're going to have a lot of possession. So it's going to be our responsibility to try and break them down. I think they're going to try and hit us on the break. Is there um, a possible... Uh, how can I put it? Is there a, the option for playing 4 4 2 there and having Lacazette and Aubameyang up front? He's not going to do that. No, <laughs> listen, I've heard a lot of people say that in the past. You know, can you play both of them up front together? But because we do need to score goals, right? And that's, yeah. I mean, we tried various combinations. Um, you know, I just don't and, think. Uh, we're, they're not been working out really in terms of scoring goals. We're not scoring a lot of goals. Okay, a lot of that is probably down to the fact that Aubameyang is not having one of his better seasons. Yeah. Uh, again, we're not getting goals from midfield. But um, what about tinkering slightly with the with the formation and maybe try and introduce a new element of play there to try and confound our uh, visitors. Yeah. Our yeah. With the game yeah. I just I just don't think he would do it and and. Playing a two-man midfield with Xhaka in it, that is where you can get overrun. Um, so, 
Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing it. Maybe not in this game, but I wouldn't be against it. But I, I don't think he'll do it. I think he'll stick with that 4 2 3 1. Yeah. It, it's just what personnel he picks and what positions he plays them. You know, he could play a Bamming on the left with Lacazette through the middle. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure, but he's got options. Well, there's nothing to stop him switching formations uh, mm. during a game if, if his first um, option doesn't work out then you know i mean i mean that is part of management you know trying different things i yeah. mean I know, I know a lot of managers these days like to stick to their rigid formations but hey you are allowed to make changes you know mm. to make you're also allowed to bring on subs before the 75th minute but anyway um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's going to be an intriguing game man it's going to be an intriguing game one that we have to win um and like i said uh, we are going to get a lot of the ball i would imagine so it's how we use it. We have to be a bit creative, a bit innovative. And um, when we get our chances, I'm hoping that the likes of Aubameyang and Lacazette, if he comes in on Martinelli, if he comes on, then they're going to take them. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to press it for a prediction now, bro. Um, what are you saying? What, do you think we'll win? And if so, what do you think the score will be? How many goals we'll get? I'm going 2-0. 2-0, yeah. I fancy us to beat them, I do. I will. I don't think they would have scored if it wasn't for the penalty um, last week. And I think now... Yeah, but you say that, but in a lot of games this season, our discipline at the back has not been great. We've given away penalties and free kicks. Yeah, that's the problem. Fouls that have led to goals and stuff like that. So we do need to... Um... I, think, I think the difference is, Laurie, effectively we are winning. You know, if we draw nil-nil, we're through on away goals. Not that I would want that to happen. But I think that will cause... At some stage in that game, Benfica are going to have to say, go for it, you know, because nil nil's no good for them. I think that's where we can pick them off. And, uh, yeah, I, I think we'll beat them. But maybe it won't be as clear as, as 2 nil. I'm hoping it's just a comfortable victory. But knowing Arsenal, it'll be like 1-1 one, one, or we'll nick it 2-1 late on. But I'm, I'm going to say 2 nil because I, I think we'll beat them. I think we're a lot better team than them. Yeah, yeah. I would agree, although I would differ with you slightly. I think um, if we can get an early goal, then obviously they're going to have to come out. And if they come out, I see us um, exposing them and exploiting a lot of their frailties. I don't feel that they're that good a team. And I think mm. we can win by at least a couple of goals. Unfortunately, I think we might concede a goal. Um, mm. But if we do, I still think we will win by a couple of clear goals. So I'm going for 3-1. So... Yeah. <laughs> for what it's worth. But I, I do think that will come through. I think that it will be a, a quite a hard contested game because I don't think people are going to give it up. I think they're going to think that they've got a chance. I think that they've seen that, you know, we do have some frailties at the back. They would no doubt have seen that performance at the weekend. That's not exactly going to frighten them, is it? So, um, yeah. I do expect a hard game. I, I don't think it's going to be easy because um, when you get to this look, part of the competition as well. Teams think in there, think, yeah, you know what, we've got a chance of going some way in this competition. And they're fourth in their league. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know what the Champions League places in the Premier League. It's probably just a couple in it. It's probably yeah, I think it's, I think it's two, yeah. I'm sure their coefficients of that, that they're not going to get 14 through. So they're probably looking at this competition that, yeah, man, it's something that they can do well in as well. So, yeah, I'm expecting a close contested game but i'm expecting us to emerge as winners right yeah. okay then so then moving on then to the second game second big game yeah so, um away early kickoff to title contenders leicester yeah in recent years title so, contenders, you know the best of fortunes against um so pulling up some receipts on leicester then they're what they're currently third in the table 49 points yeah 25 won 15, lost six, drawn four. Quite impressive, actually. They're playing quite well. Um, and, of course, we played them in the league back in October and we lost 1-0. Guess who scored? It's only Vardy, isn't it? It can only be Vardy. <laughs> he seems to score against us every time. Right? You know I mean, It's almost like he's teaching us a lesson for coming in for him a couple of years ago. When he yeah, yeah. we angered him, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you, uh, you know, they're third, and then you look at our receipts. What we're currently eleventh, um, mm. so effectively we're in the bottom half of the table. Thirty-four points, played twenty-five, 
won 10, drawn four, and lost 11, which means we've actually lost more in the Premier League season than we've won. Um, and we are 11 points off the top four places, so it's not a good place to be in. Um, yeah. And the confidence of the team, it has to be said, whilst it was um, okay a few weeks ago, in the last couple of weeks, it seems to have taken a bit of a dip. So, Curtis, man, what's your thoughts on this game? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it 100, man. I'm not confident for this game. Uh, I don't think we've beaten Leicester at Leicester for about six years. I don't think we've beaten them there since the Sanchez hat trick um, in their title winning season. And I've been to Leicester a couple of times. I remember going there a year or two ago. That I think they beat us three 0 that day, and it was just like, nah, Vardy on the counter attack, and. Um, you know, the fact we've got to go to Greece on Thursday night, whether we win or lose, that Benfica game, I think, will take a lot out of us. And, you know... Yeah, they've got a Europa League game. Yeah, they've, they've got a home game against Slavia Prague. I mean, it is nil-nil, so they have still got some work to do in, in that game. But I'm not confident of us beating Leicester. i got to be honest, I'm not... Um, <laughs> I'm not going to go as far as to say they're going to beat us because I, I do think we can maybe a draw, maybe a draw. I'll go for 1-1, one, one, but I have to admit, you know, I'd be worried about that game. The way they play, they've got a very good manager. A manager that, you know, dare I say, I wouldn't have minded him being the Arsenal manager, to be honest. Yeah. Brendan Rodgers, I think, is doing a fantastic job over there. And um, yeah, it'll be a very hidden and abetted by a certain Colo Torre, by the way. Colo Torre, man, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, be a tough one, yeah, it will be a tough one, man. Uh, like you, I'm looking at this game and I'm thinking, realistically, although I would love the win and I'd love to be able to predict the win on current form, I can't really predict no. to go there and beat them, but I would be happy with a draw. I think we are capable of getting the draw because although Leicester have played. Well, for the most part of the season, they too have had their their upsets. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I'm hoping that. I mean, listen, if we if we get the result that we're expecting against Benfica, then we're going to actually go to Leicester. Whilst we're a bit tired mentally and physically, but we go there in a good frame of mind. Confidence, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's no also doubt. an early kickoff as well. Yeah. Early kickoffs. We have not got a good record in early kickoffs. So, listen, man, we got two big games coming up. You know, if 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 I if you gave me the choice of which one to win, it's the Benfica one. So the Leicester one, just go there and have a go at them at the end of the day. That's what I want to see from Arsenal in the league now, mm -hmm. in these big games. You know, I don't think we're going to get top four. I don't think we'll even get top six. But go to these teams and try and turn them over. Don't do what you did against Man City and just give up, you know. And listen, I don't think we can um, write off the top six just yet because we've seen in this league so many times this season that um, it's so unpredictable. Um, yeah, yeah. we're only six top, points off the top six. Yeah. A team is playing well and you're expecting them to beat the other team quite comfortably and then you hear the result, you think, rah, where did that come from? You know what I mean? Mm. So, I mean, look at Southampton. Um who've beaten us recently, you know what I mean? They've, they've been like really poor runs, 60 feet straight, you know what I mean? Who would have predicted that a few weeks ago when there were one or two people saying that they'd like to see Ralph Hasselhutl as the Arsenal manager? What would they be saying now, I wonder? You know? so, exactly. Yeah, man, I mean, it, it's all to play for. Um, like we said, it's all or nothing in the Benfica game, and then you got the Leicester game coming shortly after, so it's a big week. It's a big yeah, week. So, very big. So you're predicting a draw then, yeah? Yeah, what, what are you going for? I'm going one all. Yeah, I'm going for a draw as well. Two all. Two all. Yeah. Yeah, I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just saying that because I like the phrase, but yeah, I'm going for the desperate um, because I think there will be goals in it. Uh, and I think that we are capable of going there and getting a result. So I'm hoping against hope and I'm predicting a two all. But listen, man, um, we're coming to the end of the show, bro. Uh, thank yeah. you very much for your honest and forthright comments as usual. Uh, tell the people where they can find you on social media, bro. Yeah, check out the channel, Curtis Shaw TV, growing nicely on there. Daily uploads, watch-alongs. Check it out, people. Okay, and uh, thanks, everybody, for watching the show. Thanks for tapping in. We really appreciate it. Smash that like button. Um, share this video and subscribe to the channel, man. Um, much respect. 
keep the show interactive, keep messaging us, keep commenting on the videos. We really enjoy it. And um, stay well, stay healthy, stay COVID free, observe the rules. We're looking forward to um, later on this year when we, you know what I mean, we're able to come out and play again, as it were. And um, we'll see you next week. We're out. <laughs>